The Springfield Planning Commission July 2nd meeting to order and stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're ready to call the roll while Gina gets ready. While she's doing that, I want to put this on the record that our staff has done an excellent job of putting our meetings, our previous meetings together uh, in the Zoom format. And we thank you for it. Y'all are very welcome. And I would like to say I am so glad to be back in the, in the room together. It is not nearly as difficult to get our meetings together live than it is to get them together for Zoom. And uh, I'm just thankful that we're able to get back together. Okay. You ready to call the roll, Gina? Yes, sir. Mr. Townsend. Mr. Cool. Ms. Woodard. Here. Mr. Allen. Here. Mr. Hollinsworth. Here. Ms. Mason. Here. Mr. Bragg. Here. Mr. Powell. Here. Ms. Boyd. Here. Seven members here, two absent. We do have quorum. Okay, is there a motion for approval of the minutes from June 4th? So moved. I heard a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, they'll stand approved then. Under new business, item number one is a rezoning request for Baldwin Lane uh, from R20 to R7 to allow for new residences to be built. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. Second. Second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I guess we need a vote on that. All in favor? No. We don't? No, we don't. Okay. We'll vote if somebody wants to move forward for, to, to vote on the agenda. Uh, Tony made it. Tony made it. Hey, Tony. Mr. Townsend, we saved the place for you right in the middle of the All right, thank you. Good to see you, Tony. You went to vote. Okay, we're on item number one the uh, Baldwin Lane rezoning. Yes, sir. Uh, Venture 24 uh, ha has uh, requested that we have, uh, that we uh, rezone this property or that the city rezone this property from the existing R20 zoning classification to R7. And these are the properties and the right of way in the middle that has been requested to be um, rezoned. This is uh, down in, on Baldwin Lane. Uh, this used to, uh, right here it used to be, if I remember correctly, the old Baldwin's barbecue place before they moved into the city. Um, so, th and what's shown here is this. This is the existing south side subdivision it is it was recorded november 1945 it's a uh, of record in deed book 100 page 342 um, mr moore could go ahead if, if venture 24 wanted to move forward with this they could uh, build a road here and build out these lots right here. Um, these three facing, these four facing Harp Lane, and they could do one down here on Dunn Lane, or Dunn Road. So uh, they have requested that it be rezoned to uh, R7, which is a, a budding their property right here. And uh, that would allow them to add a, Two more, Mr. Moore? Um, three, three more on done. Three more on done. So they would have an availability of nine total. Nine total. Two more than their 
capable of doing that. Um, so, uh, Mr. Moore's here. If you have any questions concerning uh, what he's requesting, or Venture 24 is requesting, Mr. Mr. Francis and residents along South Main are here to uh, give you their opinion as well, if y'all would like to get that information. Okay, I've got one question for you before Jim gets up. Uh, the right of way, right there. It's on the agenda tonight. Yes. Would that have to be rezoned at a later date? No, that we can rezone rights away at the same time. We do it all the time. You know, we we rezone within areas. The blue was just called out. It's within the area requested for rezone. Okay. All right, uh, Jim. Did you want to come up and? which is the black sheet and then handing out the uh, existing south side let me give you a different one that's labeled existing south side subdivision which is which are currently recorded and we could begin engineering work and permits tomorrow Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, it's just strange time for everybody. <laughs> so sorry. No problem. Let me speak to you. Yeah. Make sure you that mic, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Rick Carroll's around. Doesn't have a highlighted one. I'll keep this brief, but I just wanted to kind of first off discuss the area surrounding the subject property and, and kind of hit on non-conforming use. Sorry, it's not it's not on me. Non-conforming use of it. Um, so as as you can see, uh, here's the subject property highlighted. There's an R20 stretch that runs down South Main, um, and I don't know if anything, there's not much that's hitting R20. Most of the home sites are smaller. You've got some non-conforming use with some commercial. You've got industrial warehouse here owned by Hale and Cotton. Also, you can see the variety of zoning classifications just within 500 feet. I think there's six different ones, including industrial, HUD, CS, R7, R20. We do abut this R7 uh, apartments, which is also a non-conforming use, uh, would be an MRO zoning where it done today. Also, Mr. Francis's property uh, is zoned R7 as well. So we're, we're attempting an R7 classification, which on our plane, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight properties on our plane that are uh, 7,500 square feet. They're actually shown on your south side uh, subdivision. I've got Park Lane labeled there. Important to note um, that one section of Park Lane I've written is not existing, so that's not currently in place. And uh, 
The reason we're here is I think it makes a lot more sense, if you look at your black sheet, to pivot lots one through five and face Baldwin Lane rather than us have the expense to build Harp Lane. More importantly, the city of Springfield would then be, of course, maintaining Harp Lane. We can pivot those lots and have the same number of lots with uh, just without having to build an additional road, honestly. And then um, lot six through nine on the black sheet. So that's currently platted for um, one lot. Uh, we, uh, we could do four. Um, I'll remind everyone that Dunn Lane is a city-owned street. Uh, we would work with public works and codes uh, to uh, widen, improve uh, Dunn Lane. Uh, to accept the four lots. Uh, of course, bring it up to uh, Mr. Brewer. Is it a minority road? Would be a Could be a minor, minor road, okay. Minor residential or residential. So it would be either 20 or 22, depending on how. We so we would work with uh, Public Works and City Hall uh, to bring that um, road uh, up to code uh, to get to lot six there. And uh, also, I just wanted to kind of show everyone um, some of the homes that we've been building. Uh, these are on, uh, let's see. this one is 22nd Avenue, uh, which was an 11 unit trailer park uh, that we removed. And we built four of these homes. Um, you'll notice the brick to gray, uh, the landscaping, the different cut ups in the front elevation and use of mixed materials in the board and batten and the plank siding. And uh, this is representative of the same types of homes that we would build on Baldwin. Uh, these uh, 22nd sold in the 180,000 range. Um, we'll do this. Uh, today uh, would be over 200,000 um, in that area. So we're looking at the opportunity to add nine homes add the utility sales, add the water sales, as everyone knows we're committed to purchase from Logan Todd, and, and of course add property taxes, and, and what we think are, are fine quality homes. Happy to answer any questions, if anyone has any. Can you do a bar team? We, I believe we would be at six lots. We did R10, which is what we have now. We're just asking for asking for a consistent use to match existing Hart Lane and R7 zoning uh, adjacent here. So our preference would be would be R7. These homes will be for sale, not for rent. Would you have to be doing any improvements on uh, Dunn Street? Yes, Dunn would need to be widened and then we would be doing some utility work as well. We have not made it that far um, as, as far as having any architectural work or survey work done. So that's very preliminary. Um, if it turns out that it's not cost feasible, then we'll just continue with the one lot that we have on, on Dunn. And, uh, and one, one really important thing I want to point out, I hear a lot that, well, you did it for Jim Moore, you got to do it for me. So I just want to remind everyone that these are existing lots. This is not someone bringing a large parcel asking this board to divide up into R7. It's already platted with 7,000 square foot lots that we could start tomorrow. So when someone says that, you know, we can point out, no, he had existing lots he's not breaking up a larger track. I think that's important to remember. How, how many lots are you gonna put on Dunn Road? Four. We would ask for, the plat here would show four. Right. And of course we would improve and the, no, Dunn these, to these accommodate. These lots are already set up. Pardon me? These lots are already set up. Um, what do you mean already set up? No, I'm sorry. Are, you, know, you said there's already existing. Plan. Well, if, okay, so the black one is the proposed layout, which we would do if we get our seven. The white sheet is the existing twin. Let's see well, how it's platted today. This is one lot. Right. 
Right. Everything else is done. <clears throat> Everything else is, yes. So actually, we'd be getting less lots on Baldwin so and Hart. You'd be getting eight lots mm -hmm. on, on the Western Blue Sheet. But you'd have eight lots. I mean, I hate to see that neighborhood out there become that right there. I really do. I mean, we we'll we'll get through there and we, we, you know, we try to change up that one zone and on that one deal and, and the mayor board and Auburn change that for us. Yeah. But it's okay. But I mean, I don't think going, you know, it, it may be all right, R7. It may be all right. But I, just, I hate to see that neighborhood become that house right there. I mean, that's that's a starter home to me. Yep. There's no starter home out there that's going to be under $200,000 anymore. That, that just ain't happening. And I hate to see another starter home get in that vicinity right there. Yeah, I have. I appreciate your okay. your opinion. I would remind you yeah. of the apartments uh, next door to the property that, in my opinion, would would hamper a, a sale of a three hundred thousand dollar home, for example. But, but I mean, they, they were built what twenty years ago. And they're still there. Yeah. yeah. I, I just you know. Fair enough. If you took the existing lots that you have, you would have to build Hart Road to do that, though, right? Extend that roadway down. Well, that's it. so. If we if we did not pursue a rezoning, then yes, we would build Hart Hart Road, extend it. Turn it over to the city for maintenance and have i think the same number of lots on that section as the proposed layout which would turn all of the lots towards baldwin and with the r20 zoning could you get two lots out of lot number one there that's a good question i don't imagine it would be cost feasible to improve dunn road for one lot to gain to net gain one lot But it would be to get two lots. You could justify the cost of upgrading Dunn Road for two lots because that's in that for two additional what, lots. So what three you're asking total. for? Well, what we're asking R seven would allow these four on right. Dunn. So right. you know, if we could get three, I, I would just have to put the pencil to it. Right. I'm not. I'm not sure at the moment. That's uh, certainly something we could explore. Basically, you, you've got seven lots there now you can build on today, right? Yeah. Uh, well, once we built our, yeah, that are approved that to be are built. Approved. So Correct. all you're really asking for is, is two more lots. Two more lots, which would be net, just, you know, I guess right. you say net addition on done. And then upgrade done road also. Correct. And in doing that, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing then that that's going to take the burden off of the city to upkeep a road. Is is done right? To, up, done to upkeep road. harp yet and a harp, harp. extension it's yes ma'am so if we built what we have today we're going to go do a harp extension we're going to get the same number of lots everybody's backyard is going to overlook the apartments and then uh, and then turn it over to the city for maintenance yes ma'am when we could face the less number of lots directly to baldwin My comment is that these houses that I've seen that, that's been built around Springfield on 22nd and down on Bats are nice looking houses. Thank you. And uh, I'd a whole lot rather see that and sell more utilities and uh, bring in more tax revenue than a vacant lot sitting there. I also ditto those comments exactly. You know, we're looking for more homes better looking than what we've got there <clears throat> and the revenue for the city we cannot overlook that yeah, yeah these are brick to grade huh. how much is it going to bring, bring that's, 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 what I mean, that's what i'm saying there's places that house right there is not going to bring very much revenue to the city of springfield tennessee it ain't going to have two hundred thousand dollars worth of taxes yeah i'd a whole lot rather build a four hundred thousand dollar house somewhere I don't, I don't think anybody would buy a four hundred thousand dollar house sitting right there. Position right there. They might run right there. You're right. The, and I, let me and let me let me add a, add a point. The the Moreland Estates le legacy days are, I believe, over. Okay. No, nobody's de going to develop a half acre lot. There would be no money you know, with the cost of uh, infrastructure, roads, utilities. Uh, I, I'm not saying it won't happen. Uh, I'll be surprised. So you know, I think 
<clears throat> how I try to look at it, and, and when we look at surrounding communities, let's don't restrict ourselves by the square footage and equate that to the quality of the home. They, have, they really have nothing to do with one another. It's a design standard issue. You, did you can. Up, you did bring up the fact that there was like 20 homes on the other side of these existing homes already, not big here. Well, Hart Lane, the, uh, this lot is 7,500, this lot 75, 7,500, 7,500, 7,500, 8,000. Um, then you've got a, well, actually, that's not a, this is not a home. Uh, it's a, uh, Halen Cotton owns it along with this industrial building. Okay. And then of course we have a bud uh, across the street here in Sleepy Hollow. You don't know how, how large the lots are there, 5,000 feet. So I, my honest opinion is you can have a nice home on 7,000 feet. And it's being done all around us. We, I mean, we, we ramp it up. If we can build a nicer home, absolutely we do it. But this is the minimum. I assume the existing building that's on the first lot there, you're going to tear it down eventually? I know you've done some work on it. Yeah, that's, um, we're, uh, that's, we're remodeling that into a residence and uh, uh, had siding go up today and then going to paint the brick to match and do some black gutters and trim and uh, improving the building there as well. And I'll be honest with you on the reason that we're not tearing it down, there was a title issue on just that singular tract. So I can't, t I can't get title insurance to build and sell a new home. That, a title issue that dated back to the 40s. And um, we just made the decision to, to keep that one. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thanks, Jim. Thank you. I'll give Jim time to get all his stuff together there. Now, Raymond lives on the end of Dunn Street, uh, yes, right in behind this property. I always like to get a little input from the neighborhood. Well, it's given me a habit. I think this is about the fourth time I've been up here in two years. <laughs> Let me just briefly give you a little history there. My wife and I bought that house in Dunn Road 42 years ago it was the only house available for four kids and a husband and wife in Springfield. <laughs> we looked everywhere. So we bought that from Jimmy Dunn. That's called Dunn Road. And that was a Dunn Lane. It was really Kerry Lane. And it wasn't part of the city. Nobody knew who it was. We had to get the county judge to rule that it was part of the county. The city came out there and annexed that. If you'd look at the line, it sort of go like that, make sure they got me in when I bought the land. <laughs> to pay taxes. On the south side of me is Baggage Field, so uh, uh, there's no building over there that's agricultural. So uh, I have uh, nothing against the builders, Mr. Moore, and I know his, his mother, I've known him all his life, and I know he does a good job. But I'm here on behalf of not only my wife and kids and everybody out in that neighborhood. When we moved out there, uh, it was not like this. Uh, we have, I think our home was praised at like 300000 I had a man come up the other day and offered half a million for that, for that property. So it's not as low income as you think because a lot of those people live there all their life to raise their kids and went to school here in Springfield and build a future. Now at this point they say, what in the world? Every time we come up planning and zoning, we lose, so let's get out of Springfield. I don't think that's right, folks. I think it's great to build, but I believe you've got to take the, the human portion in. These people have built lives there for 30, 40, and 50 years. And we're the most diversified community there is in Springfield. We're white, we're black, we're Mexican, we're all out there. And we get along. But why do you all 
the city of Springfield keep putting things out there that you don't want to put anywhere else. And, and that's what causes the problem. That's the highest crime rate, yet you want to add nine more houses, nine more families in the highest crime rate in Springfield. That just doesn't seem very fair. And so Dunn Road he's talking about is Dunn Road. We gave it to the city. They said they would keep it up. But what he's talking about adding four houses, that's only 400 feet. You still got a bunch more half a mile longer down to my, my house. What are you going to do with that? All of a sudden I run into where it's two lane from one lane and come off of South Main Street trying to get to my house and they've been trying to get to their four houses. I guess we just all will park over to Hell and Cotton. We've had 45 houses built, if you include this one, in a quarter of a mile since January out there. That's called down at uh, Sleepy Hollow. You added eight. You've added 28 to uh, last November, where you decided where well, maybe we'll let the fellow if he only goes 10,000 square feet built. Now we're going to 7,000 square feet built. So there'd be 45 new houses, about 200 people. And the traffic, it's already horrible if you come out South Main. So I, I don't know why we need to do that. Now, I talked to David yesterday, and I was in surprise. David came up with this plaque. <laughs> and I said, David, when, when did you come up with that plaque? Yesterday morning. They called over the county office and got a plaque made in 1945. And as Jim says, he can use that plat and build six houses and one of them on Dunn Road. And I assume that, that's right. I, I don't, that's not what I had seen with Jim before. I've seen, I've seen this from the same y'all have. But, but the Southfield one was, came available as of yesterday morning for some reason. And that brings up another question. Does the legal description mean anything? Because the legal description on this uh, <clears throat> agenda and what's on this south side do not match. Because if you look at south side, what, already some of these are where people live. So we can't figure it out. We all got together today trying to figure it out. And I know Ms. Thompson said, well, is that my house there? I already live in there. So these numbers and those numbers don't match. So it's very hard for us to look at and say exactly where we're building. But anyway, I wanted to visit with you and tell you that we're against the R7. We're against the zoning to R7. We'd like to keep it R20 or keep it even the plaques, what it is. Do that, okay? And I want to thank you all for your time. I served on the county commission for 13 years and made some tough decisions. And that's not easy, and I appreciate everything you do. But I just want to let you know we would like to have you vote against this. Thank you very much. Okay, you had a, a, uh, a signature petition. I got a petition. With How many names did you have on it? You didn't give it to me. I, you asked about it, but I was just wondering how many names you had on 27. it. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Well, but that's that's fine. But I don't know if it's supposed to be recorded or what. No, no. Oh, okay. Did you say that you are not opposed to Mr. Moore starting this project? No, if, if what he says is right, that plaque and show only one house on Dunn Road, it's fine. That's what that plaque is supposed to show. South side of the plaque is supposed to show. Is that the same as this? That large lot number one on that plaque which is the one that fronts out on Dunn, yeah. is it? He was just going to put one, we'll be able to put one house yeah, put without one redoing one the road. roadway. And that's what, undoubtedly, like in 1945, but nobody had ever seen the yesterday morning of Dave, some reason, called over the county and got it. Wish I'd seen it 42 years ago. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all. Okay. This isn't a public hearing, but I thought we might ought to hear from Raymond since he lives out there at the property. Are there any other questions or and comments? I just wanted to make sure. What is staff's recommendation, David? Staff is not opposed. Can I make a comment? I'm a resident of the 
Yeah, well, it's not a public hearing tonight. We, uh, we'll just go hear from Raymond because he had contacted most of this board, I think, before the meeting. And, uh, any other questions from the board? Is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve. I second. Motion to approve and second. Uh, we are ready to vote then. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Gregg. Yes. Ms. Mason. Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth. No. Ms. Woodard. No. Mr. Townsend. Pass. Ms. Boyd. No. Mr. Allen. No. Three, four. And one four against. Motion fails. Okay, and this does not mean that it won't show up to the mayor and alderman meeting. Uh, this is just a recommendation from this board. All right, item number two is uh, also a rezoning request uh, on 17th Avenue from uh, mobile home to MRO. Is there a motion to? Put this on the floor for discussion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Dave. Okay. Reyes Construction bought these from, I believe, J.T. White's estate. He he used to own these. These are <clears throat> these are on Seventeenth Avenue. You know, a, a nicely improved improved street. The infamous pit, or I'm so been here around so long, I can remember when they called it the piggy pit. <laughs> but uh, it's right there. This is uh, the shop, shopping center, Elmo's, Elmo Cajete's right there. So uh, they have uh, requested that these nine parcels be rezoned to MRO. At some point, they would combine those and we would get some more right away off of these the city would and then uh but i think at one point i think it's 1.63 is the total um uh, they could uh let's see what they could do there i i i run these numbers but i forget them so um, and it, so it would be a three thousand square foot Looks like they could get about 23 multi-residential units there, uh, townhomes type thing. Uh, you know, they made the the uh, they made the application, and we put it out to all of our reviewers, department heads, and other plan reviewers. And one of them replied in his responses, "You had me at going from mobile home to MRO." So uh, you know. Uh, any opportunity that we have to remove mobile homes within the city limits of Springfield and provide an opportunity for uh, multi-residential. I don't know that he, we haven't had the opportunity to talk with R Reyes Construction concerning what their thoughts are, whether they would be rentals or they would be condominiums. Don't know yet. Uh, 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 Mr. Reyes has... Uh, been out of pocket for a little bit he had a brother pass away and uh, um, so we've just uh, moved forward with this uh, at their request um, staff is not opposed to the rezoning of this from mobile home to multi-residential office Okay, any questions? I don't hear any, or is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve, is there a second? 
Second. Okay. <clears throat> we are ready to vote. In order. Yes. Mr. Hollinsworth. Yes. Ms. Mason. Yes. Mr. Bragg. Yes. Ms. Boyd. Yes. Mr. Townsend. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. All right, item number three, uh, right of way abandonment request for the intersection of Baldwin Lane and Harp Lane uh, from Venture 24 LLC. Same mm -hmm. property we were discussing in item one. Yes, Ms. Let, Mr. Chairman, let me ask uh, the petitioner, would you, do you still want to move forward with this at the present time, <coughs> or Mr. Doris? We do. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I need to have a motion to put this on the floor for discussion. Yes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. I saw a nod there. Okay, Dave. Uh, this is a request <coughs> to uh, abandon this right away. That's uh, we were looking at uh, in this previous. This is this is Harp Lane. This is what has been requested to be abandoned. Um, it's a standard procedure. They have presented us with a legal description, a survey. Um, if it moves forward with the Board of Mayor and Alderman, they will eventually get us a quick claim deed, and so that the city can uh, uh, sign the property <coughs> over to them. Um, it's undeveloped property, you know, unimproved, uh, and uh, the staff has no opposition to this. Uh, if one fails, the other one might be pulled, but if they both, if one passes, this one needs to pass as well. Okay. Questions? To my knowledge, there are no utilities in there, but we always have the caveat in our ordinances that if there are any, they have to give us easements and things of that nature. Not being used for anything right now, right? No, sir. It's it's unimproved, just like the remainder of the these lots. These lots are unimproved as well. I make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. We're ready to vote, Gina. Miss Boyd. No. Mr. Townsend. Yeah. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Collinsworth. No. Ms. Mason. Yes. Mr. Bragg. Yes. Ms. Woodard. Mr. Allen. Yes. That's the five, three. All right, item number four is a final play out of Dorothy Taylor and James Freeman, three lot subdivision on 19th Avenue West. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dorothy uh, Freeman and uh, James Freeman have asked to approve this lot on 19th Avenue West. Um, it's, it's off of John L. Patterson, all the way to the end of John L. Patterson. Uh, there's, as you can see, there's. Uh, this house, this house, there, there's a lot in between here and there, but uh, there are, are two existing lots with uh, a total of 150, they're like 75 feet apiece, it's zoned R7, uh, which would allow them to do these 50 foot wide lots, they're all, they're like 51, 
and, and some change on all of them. So they're just a little bit bigger than the minimum requirement. Uh, but uh, the, the square footage of all these lots is are, uh, 0.2 acres, you know, 87.17 to 87.33 square feet. Uh, they have, uh, staff has approved. They've met all the requirements of our final plat requirements. Uh, and it has been approved by staff. Any questions? And, and oh, okay. If y'all have any questions, uh, okay. this will be the gentleman that will be purchasing these, I guess, from Ms. Okay. Freem Mr. Freeman and Ms. Taylor. I also want to go ahead and point out that they have shown how the driveways are going to go in there in, uh, in accordance with uh, our, our requirement of the municipal code. So they have, they're, they're shown how they're going to get those in there as well. And so if y'all have any questions, Mr. Gaines is here. Okay, any questions? Could you repeat the name of the property owner? Presently owned by Dorothy Taylor and James Freeman. It is... So there will be enough room behind the house to turn around? Yes. Well, for them to park, you know, they can come down the sides and they park behind the house. And they have enough room to back out and go that way. What size houses are we talking about? We just left the building envelope that's about 1,250 square foot for the site plan. Okay, any other questions? Is there a motion then? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Alan seconds. <clears throat> Ready for the vote, Mr. Chairman? Do what? Did, did you get a second? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Alan right. got a second. Are We're ready, ready to vote. You ready to vote? Mr. Hollisworth? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Mason? Yes. Ms. Woodard? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Pass it again. Mr. Gray? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Six yeses and two passes. All right, under old and other business, uh, I have asked uh, uh, David if he would uh, give us a status report on the Carter Lumber Company building. Hmm. Presently, um, we have um, we worked with Mr. Burge, Burge uh, pr previously, right after the, uh, the building burned. We hired a contractor who charged us approximately $3,000 to uh, take down the remaining wall that was along South Main Street. We were afraid that it would fall and injure people and, or, or other properties. Uh, he was to reimburse us or pay us to do that work, which did not take place. Uh, it is my understanding that we have filed a lien on the property for that amount of money. Um, we have uh, we're, we have been in contact with Mr. Burge, and we have urged him to move forward with uh, cleaning up of that property. Uh, uh, I believe uh, that uh, he had not. He did not have insurance on that property due to personal issues with his wife being sick and in the hospital. He missed his uh, renewal. Um, so uh, at some point, the city may have to move forward on the 
the cleanup there on that property. It's uh, people are have I don't know if you've noticed, but people are already starting to dump things there. There are a bunch of mattresses that have been uh, left there. Uh, so uh, we will have to discuss this with the Board of Mayor and Ottoman to see how they want to move forward with that. Do we know what the value of that property is? What it would price for? I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't. Do we know what the value of that property is, what it would appraise for? Not at the present. Time is blank property as it is. I, I couldn't tell you. It, it has the property value that probably it, that the county has appraised it for at a minimum, maybe more. I, I couldn't say for sure. But the city has a $300,000 lien on it. No, we have a $3,000 Oh, I'm rent. sorry. I misunderstood. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I if I said 300,000, <laughs> if I said 300,000, I apologize. No, <laughs> Did you hear that too, Virginia? Uh, well, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> well, you know, masks uh, make it, you know, my, my father's told me the other day, uh, I can't hear you, I had my mask on. So, uh, it, anyway, uh, but it's only 3,000 at, okay. at this time. But, uh, you know, we have been uh, getting some concerns obviously from the planning commission about it and, and neighbors surrounding neighbors they would like for us you know they would like for mr birds to go ahead and clean it up those that are uh, on south main and, and those that are on bats on the back side on bats boulevard so we will uh, we'll he, he don't he don't have any insurance at all I no so uh, you know we'll have to move delicately uh, as we go forward and the, the best way to get it cleaned up right now to go to the the right hand side of it and start moving all his cars. Mm -hmm. If you go in there and just get a lean against it and say, hey, we're finna clean it up. If you start moving his right hand cars, he'll start cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. he got a lot of money tied up in there, a bunch of old stuff. And he, he, he'd like to have it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, get rid of it. But I mean, let's don't get this thing get into the Second Amendment, please. Let's don't let it get into that mess. Or the you know, royal just, land. You know, we just can't stand that. I mean, it is it is a bad, it's, it's an eyesore. Right. It's an eyesore right there. And I would like to, you know, as I told Mr. Allen the other day, I would like to urge each of you to talk to your alderman about your thoughts on the Oak Carter Lumber Company building. You know, we try to, you, you know, we, com we communicate with the board, but we communicate about the business not the the planning commission's concerns because they never really asked mr greg relays that information from time to time but the best way for the planning commission to let the board of mayor and alderman know what your concerns are on things that are not on the business of the the planning commission are is to call them and talk to them and express your concerns and then that way there's a you know they understand where y'all stand. I don't know that I can always and fairly convey your concern about some of these things that we discuss. So I urge y'all to reach out to the people that appointed you to, to this planning commission. They respect you, they thank you for your service to our community and uh, they, would be, they will gladly listen to your concerns. There are four tracks on that property, starting down at 15th, where the funeral home is, mm, coming, yeah. coming up to where the wall there at the yeah. car lot. There's four individual tracks. Harvey Combs has tried to buy them from Dan Burge, and I think Dan Burge has threw him a price that Mr. Combs is a little bit on the ridiculous side, because mm -hmm. there's still a lot of a lot of money on the table to clean that place up. Oh yeah, right. A lot, and Mr. Burge is not going to clean it up. Uh, he don't have the resources to clean it up. Well, you, you, Dan is one of the. You, you're gonna have to force his hand. I mean, you, you can't back off of him. You got to force his hand. Say this is what we're finna do at the end of this month. We're finna go in there and clean this up. You got to force his hand. Then he can go to Mr. What's his name and say, hey. Maybe I need to go and set it. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't, then I, you're going to force his hand. If you don't, he'll be sitting there this year, next year. Yeah. He'll still be sitting there. 
and like, like I said, if y'all relay that information to the board, they will instruct Miss Hope for us to go ahead and start getting some pricing so we can talk about, you know. It's pretty good. It's just not bad lots. Yeah. Talk about how we want to move, how how they want to move forward and how they want to figure out how to fund that. I'm, I'm not sure that I have enough money in my budget to do that this year. To, you know, we, we, our budgets are not, so we've reduced revenues and so therefore we've reduced uh, budget sizes uh, all across the board. Uh, you know, we, we respect that the citizens of Springfield have had a tough time over the last few months and, uh, you know, the city of Springfield wants to do its part as well, uh, you know, reflecting that we understand uh, lower revenues at coming in. So, uh, but, you know, we, we've been waiting to go to court on the old creamery for several years. It just keeps getting worse and worse, and it's been put off once again. You know, we would like to have money in the budget to be able to take that down once the judge says go for it. So, you know, so. I could spend a lot of taxpayer money cleaning up the city of Springfield, or not me personally, but our sa our staff, We and we'd be glad to do it for y'all if and the board member alderman if that's what they wanted us to do. Okay, is there any mm -hmm. other old business or other business that you'd like to talk about tonight? Well, we have one other item. Uh, yes, well, before we move to the BZA. The agenda, BZA? We, are, uh, we looked at an additional 12 townhomes to uh, the Continental Park arms apartments or continental apartments they have presented a preliminary of another eight not enough not another eight but eight we've had discussions they would like to go with the 12 um so uh it will probably be back on the agenda next month uh we will uh you know it's a preliminary so we will do a little bit more due diligence to be at better able to answer some questions uh, concerning that and, uh, and be in a better position for you guys to make some recommendations to the property owner that uh, could help him obtain whatever number y'all think is best and the best way to access those apartments or those townhomes. And I just wanted to let you know that it was going to be coming back and it would be um, their, their, their um, preliminary site plan shows access to um, Crescent once again. Um, anything else other than that, Gina? Okay. We'll let Miss Head cover the BZA meeting agenda that's coming up next Tuesday. Not next Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Yeah. I apologize. It's just the way it felt. Uh, Mr. Gaines, who was here earlier with me, uh, three lots flat, mm -hmm. um, he has, he's requested a variance, a 15 foot variance for um, Mantlow Street at 16th Avenue with the corner lot. Uh, he would like to have a 10 foot setback on the 16th Avenue side to construct a home residence there. So that's the only item we have on the agenda. For. And I can, I can forward all that to you all um, through email if you want me to do that as well. Has Mr. Gaines built other things here in Springfield? I don't really know him. I just wonder. Samantha, has it? He hasn't gotten any building permits, has he? I didn't think he had, but I wanted to check with her. She's more up on the building permits. I just wondered. Okay. Just a curiosity. Uh, out there at the Legacy, where they're developing that piece of property uh, off Oakland Drive, what, what's that 
Is that, is that going to be townhomes, condos? Well, okay. It's going to be units that will be sold. Okay. Uh, and Miss Mason can probably speak to this better than I can. Right now, developers are calling units that they sell townhomes because it's a very specific banking language. If you call them condominiums, first time buyers cannot qualify for loans. If you call them townhomes, first time buyers can qualify for loans. Now with that said, you know, uh, Mr. Blackman was in here. We approved a subdivision. We approved a, a, a subdivision plat that had, you know, he's going to transfer a bigger private element. It's going to contain some some property along mm -hmm. with each individual unit. He had uh, shown we, you know, three dimensional of one story and two story units that we're gonna sell in a range from 250 up. You know, that was six, seven, eight months ago now. They, you know, they may be selling higher than that, but you know, they've, they've they're, they are out there grading, doing the infrastructure. Uh, they have not yet, uh, we have not talked to them about a bond establishment yet. Uh, we, y'all did approve that plat. Uh, the staff has approved, obviously, the construction plans because they're out there installing them. That was uh, the contingent approval that y'all approved. Um, he's still got to get the uh, final HOA documents to us for approval, which will be recorded with the plat when the plat is recorded. But. Uh, he has not, uh, we have not established a bond yet or, or anything like that. If, if he had bonded from scratch, it was going to be $550,000. And so he chose to, rightly so, to put in a lot of infrastructure. But it's going to be on the line of, of the existing townhomes that are there over across from the clubhouse, something along that line. Uh, well, we've got that information, I mean, Mr. Powell, and I'm glad to get, send that to what you. you. I, I don't know how I missed that. But, uh, well, you might not have been here that day. Right. Uh, it's uh, brick fronts, hardy board backs, uh, uh, granite finishes, hard, you know, hardwood floors. It's, you know, high end, higher end development. Uh, there's, uh, you know, we get calls all the time about when's he going to put it, get them done and put on the market. I'm ready to buy one. So I think they'll sell well in Springfield. We'll be glad to get that, uh, those uh, 3D renderings for uh, Mr. Blackman's development email to you. We'll, I'll make myself a note and okay. send it to you first thing Monday morning. Sure. I'm going to sleep late tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> also, you can go on his website, White Mountain Road. Yes. Okay. I can just do that. I, I, can just, I, mean, uh, I don't know if they're going to look exactly like those, but that, if you go yeah. on his website, you can see some of his work. I just, I, I, I guess I missed that meeting. I just was curious about what was going to be in and about how many were going to be there. There's going to be 52. 52. And if y'all, and we had this discussion, and I don't know if you were privy to it, you know, that's part of the legacy. HUD that was finalized in 2004 and that 11 and a half acres was designated with up to 226 multi-residential units so to get 226 multi-residential units you were going to have to build a very large building very tall which would have been allowed under the PUD negotiations that were made in, in uh, 2004. I, I find, uh, you know, I'm very, we, I think the city of Springfield is very fortunate that Mr. Blackman did not want to go that way and he wanted to go with what he went with and the 52 units, that number worked for 
him to buy the property, improve the property, build on the property, and sell. So he's he's not going to be selling any lots. He's going to build them himself and then sell them as he goes. All right. Anything else? This is just information purposes only. I don't know how many of you are aware of the, the simple fact that when we raised the water rate, it was a, a half two situation. We are on the hook for $3 million per year for water. And this ain't going to stop. It's ongoing. So we need to sell water and we need to build everywhere that somebody is willing to build a nice, decent, affordable house. It's the only way we're going to be able to uh, keep them uh, raising these rates to where people can hardly afford them right now. Better talk to your water department team. All this stuff goes back to when Doug Bishop was here. They uh -huh. knew that sewer and water were problems and they kept kicking the cans. Kicking the can. I understand that. Part of that deal come back to the department here now about giving permission on this water. But I know the valve ain't been turned off in Todd County yet, but it ain't very far off, I'm sure. We, we're making payments to Logan Todd now. So you're making payments now? Yeah, we, we're I think we started right buying water. That's what I'm saying. You get, you get to talk to your water department and say, hey, anybody wants to hook up, baby, you better hook them up. Well, and there are some areas that we, we can, and there are some areas that we can't. Uh, last, just last year, uh, we had... Uh, a uh, hydraulic study done in areas and uh, there was recommendations made and uh, there are capital improvement projects that have to be done uh, unfortunately some of those uh, were not scheduled in this upcoming fiscal year due to uh, reduced budgets but you know we have every intention of improving our system so that we can make those taps and sell that water is uh is as soon as we can. I mean, it's it. We all understand so, that so it's needed. Be getting off pretty now. If you are making payments on it, we could. You know, if if we opinion. can build a lot in the city of Springfield, you know, we can we can sell some water. We've got you know, we've got a 36 mile urban growth boundary. Uh, you know, unfortunately by state law, I, I the more I look into things, the more I, I, I I'm just amazed but you know state law pretty much says we can only annex properties that are contiguous to the city of Springfield we can't do any corridor annexations or anything like that so we can do annexations by referendum where the majority of the people in the areas that we're wanting to do uh, or annex vote yes we can annex that but we agreed not to do referendum annexations in our uh, urban growth boundary meetings and, and agreements with uh, the county and the uh, the 10 other cities back in uh, 2012. you know in the next two years we will be sitting down with those entities again and renegotiating growth boundaries and uh, how we can move forward with annexations um, but um, you know our, our boundary probably won't change just the, the availability to how we can move forward with annexation line. Does, does state law require you to not offer sewer services outside the city limits? No, state law does not require. And and, and I beat this dead horse enough, but but y'all have strangled the growth of the growth boundary mm -hmm. by not offering sewer outside the city limits. And I give you an example on right there on forty nine. The gentleman put that subdivision in out there. Y'all have actually just nailed him to a tree because he had to go with the county rigs, but then he has to meet the city requirements on sidewalk, street lights, and spend all this extra money that he's not getting any services from the city at all. Where if the city would offer sewer it, to the growth boundary, then you would open the growth boundary right around Springfield up to numerous development, nice developments, you'd have a sewer tap, you'd have a water tap. You got two for one right there. Yes, sir. And we, I, I can very, I can pass that information along to Miss Hope. And uh, you know there are two sides uh, 
to that discussion. Can I understand both sides? Uh, you need to. There are always two sides to oh, every yeah. discussion. Sure. I understand that. But as we all live in the city and just the water issue that Mr. Craig's talking about, that is the total reason I was for, I mean, we approved one that came tonight. No, but we didn't. The reason I was going to approve it was because it's going to bring more, <coughs> more it, it, it offers diversity. And that's what Mr. Francis was talking about, was diversity. Uh, there are a lot of people that want to spend $200,000 on a home and have something that they're paying their taxes toward more than what they've got, what they're living is, what I'm saying. So yes, I just felt it was another opportunity to increase revenues and improve the area. And I just want those that might have wondered why I vote. That was, the re that was my reasoning behind the way I voted on that. I just could not see it. Uh, behind the bank by the railroad trust when you're going to come up with three million dollars to fix it I know what the bid was the water that runs off by the bank mm -hmm. by the railroad the trust mm -hmm. oh. if y'all if, if y'all don't hurry up and fix that quick it's going to happen one night when it rains and somebody's going to get hydroplaned out there and really in bad shape and we'll, it uh, runs plumb out in the other road over there. Yes. Because it's been going off over a year now. Yes. And we know what the problem is. It can cost three million dollars to fix it. But with some point, the city got to come up with the money and say, "We got to fix this." And, it's the city's problem. and well, I think that the city. I think that we have. Under, I, under, I, under I will follow under. up with Miss yeah. uh, yeah. Hope, but I think that we have uh, agreed. To a uh, you know the the con we went out for bid. I think the contractor held his price. I think we're going to move forward with that. Uh, we you know we were trying to explore other funding options before we actually said that we would move forward with that. But you, you're absolutely correct, Mr. Johnson. Well, we got to do something. You can't fight CSX. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, you might as well just give it up and say we're going to fix it. And go on. Yes, sir. Because they're going to tear your tail up and, and held you forever. I concur. I, you know, I'm firmly CSX convinced. Is tough. I'm firmly convinced that CSX has more attorneys than they have train drivers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> Tonight's been a little longer. Before you adjourn, you know, I was just all like, glad to be back together. Yeah. I would just like to say once again, it's a pleasure being able to get back together. Uh, uh, I've, I've missed y'all. I've missed, missed the opportunity for uh, the for us to get together as a group and discuss the city's business. This is by far much more uh, uh, a better forum to to move forward than the the video format that we were using. Once again, uh, I just want to reiterate to you guys that uh, the City of Springfield appreciates your service on our Planning Commission and we thank you so very much for taking your very valuable time and working and helping the City of Springfield move forward. Thank you. And y'all have a happy and uneventful 4th of July weekend. Are we ready to adjourn? Go.